Hey guys, Arsene here. And today I'm going to tell you why I decided to ditch my Xeon and go with a mainstream CPU. As some might know, when I started out, I was a big supporter of uh, the idea of using an old Xeon engineering sample from eBay instead of a mainstream CPU, but this has changed. It all started when I bought this 6600K based system for a project. And until I got to that, my girlfriend was using it as a gaming PC in our apartment. Despite both PCs uh, running off of an SSD, I uh, noticed that the Skylake system over there was booting uh, uh, faster than mine, considerably faster than mine. But I don't care too much about the boot difference between SSD based systems, it got me thinking. Later when we were playing Overwatch together I noticed uh, more things. Uh, her game would launch faster and get into the hero select screen a few seconds before me, despite having the same thing. Thus I decided to, go, uh, to dive deeper. It is well documented that games run faster on mainstream Intel platforms than on low clock speed Xeons. So I won't dive too much into that, but you're seeing some of my benchmark results on the screen. But this is not what this video mostly is about. What really interested me is how well it would perform in video editing. Considering other people's findings that Premiere Pro runs better on lower core count, uh, higher clock speed CPUs, I decided to see how well it would perform in my video editing tasks. The 6600K had shown to be uh, noticeably faster than my Xeon at its stock 3.5 GHz. So I decided let's overclock it to 4.6 and uh, give it a run on my normal video editing workflow just to give it a chance with an overclock. And here are the results. Both PCs were running the video editing tasks both of a boot SSD and both had a, 10, a GTX 1070 to assist with time and performance in rendering meaning that I was trying to minimize all the variables, which is not very doable since one system is newer than the other. Probably the weirdest thing I noticed uh, is that the difference between uh, 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes of RAM was basically unnoticeable and it could uh, probably fall within testing variants. But most importantly, the i5 was a bit faster at rendering the project than the Xeon. A bit by a few seconds, not very that important, but still interesting finding. And even more interestingly, the i5 was significantly faster than the Xeon at stabilizing the footage. I don't apply color correction to my videos, thus I did not include any tests with color corrections and LUTs. Uh, maybe i do it later when I start using that, but until now I have no experience with it, so it really doesn't make sense for me to do that kind of testing. In the end, these results helped me decide. I will be switching to a quad or an 8th gen hexa core in the near future and sell my E5 2670V3 and the motherboard since they are less efficient for what I need my PC to do. This will not apply to everyone though. I have to stress that while rendering the Xeon never exceeded 70% of usage, meaning that uh, uh, one could easily still use the PC, maybe create a thumbnail while the video is rendering or go on YouTube and start watch some videos. On the, on the other hand, the 6600K was packed 100% for the whole duration of the render stabilization and stabilization, meaning you could really not operate it while it was doing those tasks. But for me, not being able to operate my PC while rendering for 10 minutes is not that much of an issue. Just go to the kitchen, prepare some food or do something else. Yes, I still want to stick to a lower core count CPU. I hope this video was as insightful for you as making it was for me, and you're now uh, better equipped to make an educated CPU choice. And thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.